He's back in the news, America. Yes, indeed, it is true. We're talking about Texas Governor Rick Perry, who this week was basically indicted um, for, you know, over abuse of power. He calls the claims outrageous, but we here at The Fowler Show call the claims exactly on the money. And here's exactly what happened. So Perry was indicted by the Travis County Grand Jury. Now, let me make it very clear. He's saying this is politics, but he was indicted by a grand jury, meaning a jury of his peers. Twelve random people, right? Twelve random people got in a room, evaluated the evidence, and found that there could be a probable cause that Governor Rick Perry abused power, right? Um, and this is because he planned to veto funds to a Democratic district attorney, Rosemary Lumberg, who refused to resign after a drunk driving incident. The incident alleged that Perry abused his power as a way to leverage, uh, as a, way to leverage a resignation out of Lumberg. And, here's, and this is the thing on this one, right? Whether or not she's an alcoholic, clearly she is, or maybe not an alcoholic, she just got drunk one, a little too drunk one night, it doesn't matter. You can't use your power as governor to force somebody to resign if they're democratically elected. And withholding funding is an abuse of power. Right now, I get it. Folks out there, oh, folks out there saying, well, that's the third of a veto. But there's a di it's a difference, right? Like, I think, let's take this in a Washington perspective. So the president threatens to veto their repeal of Obamacare. That's different. That is the president using the law and using the power of the veto to his benefit. But it's another thing if the president says, I'm gonna veto every bill that comes across my desk until John Boehner resigns. I'm gonna veto funding for the Congress until John Boehner resigns. That is an abuse of power because you're forcing out another elected official who wasn't elected by you and you're not in control over because of an action that they made or the action they didn't make. And so even though Rick Perry feels as though these claims are outrageous, we here at the Fowler Show feel as though that he should have his day in court. He's already taken his mug shots, and he's already been fingerprinted, right? Because that tells you exactly how they play down in Texas. Either way, we'll have to see how this trial plays out and pans out. But, you know, he could face prison. He could, he could face up to 109 years in prison if found guilty. And I think we should let the trial play itself out. Because clearly, this governor has chosen to abuse power. And this, this shouldn't surprise you from somebody like, the, like to the likes of Rick Perry. He's also the same person who tried to take away a woman's right to choose and sort of make and sort of turn Texas back to 19, 1882 when it comes to women's rights. So an abuse of power is not a far stretch from this. And, and I think uh, um, from a political perspective, this could hamper his ability to be affordable candidate for the presidential run in 2016. And I think it also could put a bad taste in the mouth of Texan voters, Texas voters, um, in the current governor's race that's happening in the next couple of days. We'll have to see what happens, but we'll keep you monitor we'll keep it we'll keep it we'll keep it tight here at the Fowler Show. Make sure you know as soon as we know.